Hi there and welcome to my channel where I post one book review every week. Today I am talking about The Villa by Rachel Hawkins and here are some quick content warnings for this book. The first part of every video is spoiler free so you can decide whether or not this book is your cup of tea. After I do a quick summary and give a brief review, then I'll go into a longer synopsis and more of my thoughts. The Villa is a book with a lot of complex layers, so if you're the kind of reader who likes to be constantly learning new information and meeting new characters, this might be a good book for you. The book starts when the narrator, Emily Sheridan, decides to go on a trip to Italy with one of her old friends, Chess Chandler. Emily is going through how health problems and is currently struggling through a divorce with her soon-to-be ex-husband, Matt. Emily is the author of a series of mystery novels, and Chess Chandler has recently become a huge name in the self-help book sphere, and since Chess is planning to go to Italy anyway, she invites Emily along so that she can get some work done on her mystery novels. The villa that they are traveling to in Italy has a horrific past, which distracts Emily from her work and leads her down an investigative rabbit hole. As the summer stretches on and the two women spend more time around each other, things get more tense and they start to get on each other's nerves. As the mystery of the house continues to unravel and we watch Emily and Chess interacting, we start to wonder if this house is doomed to repeat many of its past failures. Now that you've heard a quick summary, let's go into my rating system. One star means that I could not finish the book. Two stars means that I finished but I struggled to. Three means that it was good and it was worth reading. Four means that I really liked it and I would recommend it to a friend. And five stars, which is my highest honor, means I would read the book again. I gave this book four out of five stars, so if you like thrillers or books set in Italy, I would definitely recommend it. We are now entering the spoilery part of the video, so if this book sounds like your cup of tea and you don't want to be spoiled, now is the time to click away, go read it, and then come back to my deep dive so you can see if you agree with my thoughts and opinions. If you like the sound of this book but you don't want to read it, I'm here for you and I will go ahead and give you a fast run through so that you can hear all about what goes on. So the villa starts with Emily and Chess meeting up at a cafe where they reconnect and have a great time and Emily goes home wondering why she doesn't see Chess as much as she used to. The two of them were friends in high school and all throughout college but then after college they split and went their separate ways. A few days after the meeting at the cafe, Chess calls Emily and says she has a crazy idea and invites Emily to come with her to Italy so that Emily can work on her finishing her mystery novel, which will help her pay for her divorce. Over the past year, Emily has been going through a lot of health problems, um, which ultimately has led to, to the divorce that she's currently going through. While Emily has been struggling, Chess has been experiencing huge success, publishing several books in the self-help sphere, being a guest speaker for big conferences, and generally having the kind of fame that gets her on to Oprah. Emily arrives in Italy and discovers that the villa they're staying at actually has a pretty haunted past. In the 1980s, a group of musicians and their friends stayed at the villa only to wake up one morning to discover a horrible murder. And as the villa tells the story of Emily and Chess in the house presently, it also tells the story of what happened with those rock stars and their friends in the 1980s. Mary is our narrator for the story that happens in the 1980s and she is a 19 year old dating the much older Pierce who is an aspiring rock star and also has a wife and child whom he's left to be with Mary. On Crazy Chance, they are invited to come to Italy to spend the summer with Noel Gordon, who is a renowned rock star, super popular, like people notice him on the street. Tensions in the house begin to rise as Mary is working on her horror novel. Pierce is wanting to become a great musician and wanting to work with Noel Gordon. Noel Gordon is doing drugs and just generally causing problems. Mary's sister, Lara, is writing her own music. And the final character, Johnny, is generally jealous of everyone in the house and frustrated that Noel Gordon doesn't want to make music with him. Emily is becoming more and more interested in this story with Mary and Lara and Noel and Pierce and isn't really working on her mystery novels at all. She sends an email to her editor proposing this new, different kind of book instead. Emily and Chess begin to make little digs at one another and tensions rise when Emily finds out that Chess reads the new manuscript that she's working on that's about the mystery that happened in the villa. After a phone call with Matt, her soon-to-be ex-husband, 
Uh, Chess makes Emily a drink to help her feel better and then Emily gets violently sick just like she was for most of her marriage. Emily gets revenge for Chess's snooping by also snooping on her computer and finds that Chess's new draft for her self-help book uh, is basically advising people not to be like Emily. We come to the height of the conflict when Emily notices that Chess is wearing a bracelet she saw hidden in Matt's drawer but that Matt never actually gave to her. Chess admits that she slept with Matt once <laughs> and Emily gets really frustrated and upset and attacks her, tackling her to the ground. Chess goes on to explain that she slept with Matt as a courtesy to Emily um, just to see if he would do it and to test and see how good of a husband he actually was. After they did sleep together, he continued to pursue Chess and actually the entire trip to Italy was Chess's plan to tell Emily about what was going on with her and Matt and to finally get Matt to leave her alone. Emily actually believes her and agrees to share the Rockstar murder manuscript project that she's been working on with Chess so the two of them can write it together. Emily had actually also found a hidden last piece of Mary's diary which details that it was actually her and Lara who killed Pierce and not Johnny as it was to be believed. In the story from the 1980s, Mary went on to write a very successful horror novel, which is what Emily uses for most of the book to find clues, and her sister Lara actually went on to publish a very successful album of music that most people have heard of and listened to. After having their heart to heart about Chess sleeping with Matt, the two women come together and read Mary's last little piece about killing Pierce and decide that the best course of action is to actually murder Matt so they invite him to the villa take care of him swiftly and then go on to publish their book and experience crazy amounts of success at the end of the book we find out that Mary returned to the villa late in her life after finding out about a diagnosis that was letting her know she might not make it much longer and when she returned she hid the final piece of the diary that Emily and Chess used as inspiration to murder Matt and that that actual final piece was fictional and that Mary and Lara did not actually kill Pierce it was Johnny and Mary hides that and decides that whatever happens when somebody finds it isn't her problem because she'll be long gone okay so now that you have a basic rundown of what goes on in the book let's get into some of my thoughts I always like to start with praise and what I liked about a book first so the first thing I'm gonna say is that I thought the villa had very good character all of the characters were really developed and complex and we see this in the relationships specifically between Chess and Emily and also between Lara and Mary and even Pierce when we're looking back at the 1980s version of the story. Another thing that I thought this book did well is that it did get my heart racing a few times, especially when we start to suspect that maybe Chess is poisoning Emily or that Chess has been with Matt, which turned out to be true. But I did uh, definitely think that it did a good job at being a thriller and doing what a thriller is supposed to do, which is to make you feel nervous and, and wonder what's gonna happen next. There are also many, many layers to this story, um, specifically with like the women telling the story. It all goes back to Mary's mother who wrote a book about Lilith. And then we see Mary being kind of an unreliable narrator throughout telling her version of the story, um, especially when she leaves the fake ending. At the end of the book, we see Mary reflecting on whether or not she had anything to do with Pierce's death, even though she wasn't the one who directly killed him. She wonders if deciding to come to the villa or deciding to stay or not coming right away when she heard Pierce yelling her name makes her part of what caused him to die. And it's interesting because not only were maybe some of her actions part of Pierce's death, but her leaving the end of her her story where she fake kills Pierce with Laura actually drives Chess and Emily to murder Matt at the end of the book. So Mary is kind of responsible for multiple murders. The story in the 1980s mirrors the present day story because a man dies and ultimately several women are propelled to great success. So in the 1980s story we see Pierce die and Mary goes on to write her book and Laura goes on to publish her album and then in the present story Story, we see Chess and Emily take care of Matt and then they both go on to be very successful with a story about what happened in the villa. At the beginning of the villa we question Chess's intentions and even wonder if she and Matt are conspiring together to poison Emily but by the end of the villa we are pretty certain that both Emily and Chess are kind of terrible twisted people. I just kind of ended up feeling kind of apathetic about both Matt's death and also their friendship and their success. My first criticism is that I thought the ending of the book was a little bit rushed 
Um, when, we're, when we're looking at Mary and Laura's story, we definitely see a lot of detail and description about what happens or doesn't happen um, with Pierce's murder. But when it comes to Matt's murder, I think we pretty much just get like the two women watching him pull up to the villa and then a news story about his accident. I would have liked to see a little more of what happened at the end and maybe even a little more context about what exactly was going on between Chess and Matt. And I'm also a tiny bit skeptical about the idea that these two women could bring Matt to the villa and essentially murder him, both having pretty clear motives for doing so and that the police would just 100% be on board with the fact that it was an accident. I also think that the murder of Matt comes in a little bit strong at the end and I think that if there had been some other indicator that these two women had maybe done something else that was horrible or been sharing some terrible secret from another bad thing they did together that it might be a little more believable that they would just jump to murder immediately at the end of the book. But all in all, I definitely thought this one was a good read. I gave it four out of five stars and if you like thrillers, it's definitely going to be up your alley. And you can add me on Goodreads if you want to see more about what I'm reading now and what I plan to see next. Thanks for watching!